Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to show you a new feature in Oracle EPM data pipeline. I've written about it, it's brand new, it's part of the September 2023 update. So what I'm going to show you is about the data pipeline execute options. So at a stage level you can now control when you run a pipeline, you have the options uh, to either to continue or stop the processing of a specific stage, depending on the jobs that you have in the stage, whether it, whether the jobs fails or whether the job is successful. Now, when a job fails, the stage also fails, right? And then you have an option to indicate whether you want to continue to the next stage or do you want to stop right there? So that's a great feature. Uh, so I'm going to show you that today. Let's see how that is done. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Arun. I make videos on Oracle ERP Cloud, EPM Cloud, Integrations and Analytics. So if you're interested in these kind of topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, additionally, I publish a newsletter on Oracle EPM related topics. So if you're on LinkedIn, you can subscribe to the newsletter and uh, give me your comments and feedback. All right, so I am in the instance. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to create a data pipeline with two stages. Then I'm going to show you how this is going to work, the execute options. All right. So let's go into application data exchange. We're going to search for pipeline. All right. So that's an easy way to filter out all of the other integrations, all of the other artifacts that you have in data exchange and just focus on pipeline. So if you just type in pipe, um, or you can even type pipeline and it'll just show you the pipeline that you have. We'll just create a brand new one. So let's go ahead and create uh, action pipeline. And you give it a name, monthly. Click on save and continue. Then we'll show you different variables. I'm just going to go ahead and delete most of them. I don't really need them. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the send mail option to on failure. And that's it. I'm going to click on save. And this is your um, canvas, if you want to call it. This is where you can create the stages and the jobs. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the jobs that you're attaching or including as part of the pipeline should also already be created. For example, if you're uh, including a job called import metadata, that job should already be created in the system. If you are including a job type of business rule, that business should already be created and deployed in EPM. So you're not creating anything brand new from the pipeline itself. You're including already existing artifacts, jobs, um, whether it is import data, import metadata, export metadata, business rules, um, all of that artifacts. You're taking what's already there in the system and then you're orchestrating that uh, pipeline or process flow. All right. So let's go ahead and create two stages. I'm just going to call them stage one and stage two and I'll, I'll explain why. So let's go ahead and create this as uh, stage one. And let's call this stage one. That's fine. So now you can see at the stage level, you would see an option called on success. Uh, continue or stop, right? So if it's successful, whether you want to continue or stop. And same for on failure, whether you want to continue or stop. So this is at the st stage level, not at the job level. It would have been nice if it was at the job level. Now, hopefully that's something that Oracle can include later, but at least this is good. So, all right, so we created a stage. Let's go ahead and create an import um, metadata job. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this create job option, click on the new job and select the job type. Here we're going to do import metadata. So I've already created a job, so it's able to pick up that specific job. So if I click on this drop down, it's just going to give me that import metadata job that I've created. Pretty easy. Um, then you're going to give an import file name. Zip. Uh, refresh cube, yes or no. 
And now this is another new feature that was released as part of the September update. You can now pass variables to uh, the parameters, right? So here I have a refresh cube. I can either select yes or no, but you can set a variable and that variable value can be passed to this refresh cube parameter. So I'm just gonna call it, uh, I'm just gonna pass yes and give um, error file name. All right, pretty good. All right, so here what I've done is, and on the stage, uh, if I go back to the stage, you can see that on success continue, on failure continue. So both conditions I'm saying, okay, continue to the next stage, right? So let's go on and create another stage. I'm gonna call this stage two. I'm just call this stage two as well. All right, so here we're saying again, same thing on success continue, on failure continue. Let's go ahead and create a new job in stage two. So this time let's go ahead and create like a EPM platform job. And I'm gonna call this import GLTB data. So I have, a, I have a import data job that I've already created. So in the job type, now let's go ahead and select import data and give the job name, import GLTB data. Um, and this is the file name that we want to pass. Let's say gltb.csv. All right. So that way we have created stage one, stage two, and stage one. We have selected the execute options on success continue, on failure continue. Same for stage two, we have selected um, on success continue, on failure continue. And some of the other things that I wanna highlight is, you know, for the each stage, you'll see this number of jobs up top, right? So it just indicates that there's only one job in this um, stage. Same for this stage, you can see that there is that count displayed. And this icon here shows that these are all brand new um, stages and jobs. You can delete the job, you can delete the stage using this icon. You can collapse the stage like that. Um, and you can also use this option called expand collapse all stages. So if I click, you know, all of these stages gets expanded. You can see the different components of each stage. This plus icon lets you to create a new job in that uh, stage. And this state, this plus icon uh, allows you to create a new stage. All right, so now um, we have completed the pipeline uh, for now. So let's go ahead and run this. Now imagine, you know, this is a real world scenario. We uploaded the files and stuff. Um, um, give my name, give my email ID there. Click on continue. And you'll see this uh, icon here appearing now, which says um, it is executing. So if I, I can click refresh right here and it'll show me the status of the pipeline. So here, what happened is, you know, stage one, the first job failed. So the job, st the stage failed, and then it went on to stage two. Uh, again, that failed. Now, that's because here we have said on failure continue to the next stage right so for stage one we have said on failure continue to stage two let's go on and change this so i'm just going to say um stop the other thing that you would notice here is now you have the option to select the stage so if it is failure you can select to skip stages and go to a specific stage that you want. So if I had stage three here, so let's create a stage three. Um, let's call this stage three itself. And here we can see on success on continue, right? So stage one, let's go back to stage one on failure. Now I can see, you know what, if it fails, you can skip to stage three or you can continue to stage two. So now you have that option. So if you have multiple stages, you do have the option to skip and go to a specific stage. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this stage. I just wanna show you that, that 
option is available. So what I'm going to do is uh, for stage one, I'm just going to change on failure, stop. So if it fails, you're going to stop, don't execute stage two. All right, so let's do a refresh. Let's go ahead and click run pipeline. And same thing, just going to give my email ID, click on run and submit the data pipeline. So you could see that, you know, the last time when we executed the data pipeline stage one, even though it failed, it went on to execute the stage two. So let's see what happened this time. I'm going to click on refresh. You can now see that stage one failed and it stopped there because we have said on failure, stop. It didn't continue to the next stage. So this is a brand new feature and I think this is going to help um, orchestrate the data pipeline better. So if you don't want a specific stage to be executed, um, you can now control that. Uh, what would be sweet is at job level, if you're able to control uh, whether I want to skip to a specific stage uh, or whether I want to skip to another job within that stage. So if you're able to do that, I think data pipeline is going to get much more powerful. All right. So today I just wanted to show you this new feature in data pipeline. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, if you have comments and feedback, let me know in the video. And uh, yeah, as always, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel to see new content like this. I'm going to create another video on creating an entire data pipeline, which will include the different stages. And I'll show you how to use variables and also how to execute um, jobs in remote instances. So if, you, if you're working in planning, how can you invoke um, job type in FCC, for example? All right. If you're a member of OATUG, um, I did a um, webinar on EPM data pipeline. I'll leave a link to that. You can go ahead and watch that if you're a part of OATUG. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll talk to you on the next one.